Star Wars 7x7 episode 2529. It's a Spinner Sunday episode, and finally, we have a completed story arc with the High Republic. The first five issues form the first story arc in the first wave of Phase 1 of the High Republic Mega Storytelling Initiative, and we're going to dive into the details of that today. Punch it. <laughs> Hey Rebel Rouser, I'm Alan Voivod and this is Star Wars 7x7, your daily dose of Star Wars joy. And thank you so much for joining me for it. So this is a full spoiler episode for the first story arc from the High Republic series from Marvel and it is called There Is No Fear. The first five issues of this series form a complete story arc. Although, to be perfectly honest, the <laughs> first issue isn't necessarily part of the story arc. It's more of a prologue, if you will, and issues two through five form the meat of the story arc, pun intended, since the Drengir are the main villain in the midst of all of this. As for our heroes, well, the primary heroes are the pair of Jedi, Skier, who is the master to Jedi Padawan Keeve Trennis. And in previous episodes, we've talked about Skier and Keeve Trennis because Kevin Scott has referred to them in various interviews about the High Republic and about how you know, wonderfully enamored he is of Skier as a character and also how important Keeve Trennis is going to be and the fact that they have talked about her extensively in the midst of their planning of the High Republic storytelling initiative, that they are very clear on her arc and that every story that they're telling is building up to you know what her full story arc is going to be. So it's not one of those situations where they're discovering the story as they go, at least as far as Keep Trennis goes. Maybe they are, maybe they're just kind of filling in the details, but you know, the high points of her journey, they are fully aware of them and we are seeing them play out first within this first story arc of the High Republic. Now, this prologue issue, the first issue of the High Republic series, involves Skier and Keeve Trennis at Keeve Trennis's Jedi Trials, or at least what's supposed to be the Jedi Trials, at least as far as Keeve thinks, and then <laughs> stuff goes strangely and unexpectedly awry, and apparently it turns out that that was the plan all along for Keeve to be able to deal with things going awry. Skier and Keeve are being introduced to the comic readers in this particular story, but Skier is actually a known quantity at some level because he appeared in Light of the Jedi, the novel by Charles Sewell. In that novel, he experienced a battlefield injury at the Battle of Kerr when the Nile had their first big uh, interstellar face-off with the Republic and the Jedi, and Skier lost an arm in that battle. So as we see him during this particular prologue issue, he is without that arm. But as the events of this particular issue unfold, we find out that it's basically taking place during Light of the Jedi because it's after he experienced that battlefield injury, but it also includes the dedication of Starlight Beacon. And then the bulk of the story arc, issues two through five, take place after the events of Into the Dark, which is the young adult novel by Claudia Gray that came out in February of this year. And the reason we know that is because the Drengir are on the loose. And we first encountered them in Into the Dark, and they were let loose by Jedi who were doing something that they thought was well-meaning, and it turned out it was exactly the wrong thing to do. And we get to see just how bad the Drengir can be because of the world of comics, basically. The fact that the images can be depicted. And so you see, and, you know, it's bloodless, at least, you know, as far as this part goes, with various people getting captured by the Drengir and tendrils inside ears and noses and mouths and oh yeah it's bad and then Kevin Scott referred almost gleefully to an exploding hut in one of his recent interviews about the High Republic and the exploding hut thing happens in this particular story arc because the Drenger have actually managed to infest the body of a hut and in the midst of all the action which involves a Jedi 
Responding to a distress call and finding a ship that's already been attacked by the Nile, turns out it was a hut ship and it was carrying a kind of grain that is an ingredient in Bakta, which at this point in the whole Star Wars storyline, Bakta is a very new thing. Bakta, of course, being that you know funny stuff that will heal people remarkably fast and well. You remember Luke being immersed in a Bakta tank in The Empire Strikes Back after he was attacked by the Wampa. And this leads the Jedi to a planetary system called Sedri and a planet Sedri Minor in there where this particular grain is produced and it turns out that even though they are an independent colony they've signed a contract with the Huts and the exchange is grain for protection. Well, <laughs> the Drangir are causing problems on here and so the Huts arrive to deliver that protection, but it just so happens that the Jedi are there investigating what was going on with this ship that was attacked and had traced the grain back to the Sedri Minor planet, the Sedri system and the Sedri Minor planet. And so <laughs> chaos ensues as a result. Meanwhile, Skier has managed to get his Padawan Keeve Trennis to the point where she has passed the trials and has become a Jedi Knight, but it's sort of a just-in-time thing because he is realizing that he's losing his connection to the Force somehow, and mysteriously so. We don't know how it's happening, we just know that he's aware of it. He's not able to sense things the way that he used to. He wasn't able to sense the dark side when they arrived on Sedri Minor in the form of the Drengear, and so he does, you know, what ultimately, I guess, is, you know, kind of like the ultimate sacrifice. Ultimately, ultimate. Sorry about that. <laughs> but he allows the Drengear to bond with him, which helps him grow back his missing arm, but it grows a viney arm that is able to then extend and <laughs> shoot out even farther. So that is definitely helpful for some of the battle that happens with the Huts. But it also causes problems too because it, you know, links him mentally with the Drengear and he's unable to break it and to control it and you know they're able to kind of control him until he is able to lower his mental defenses and convince Keeve that you know Keeve can overwhelm him mentally with a Jedi force trick and transmit a message to the Drangir claiming that the meat is unclean, that the bodies of the Jedi and the folks on Sedri Minor and on Starlight Beacon where the hut corpse had been taken and the Drangir that was inside it broke out and was causing all sorts of havoc on Starlight Beacon. Basically, there's a whole telepathic root system they have and so she's able to transmit a message through Skier that everybody's unclean and it will poison them if they try to eat all the people in the area and so they withdraw at least for the time being. But the storyline also gives us insight to what's going on with the huts and the Republic at this time. So there is still hut space, and for the most part, the huts, I guess, have stayed clear of hut space, but there are sanctions in place to keep them out of the Republic, so, you know, something is not cool with them. And there is reference to the five families, so there is, I guess, a ruling, you know, set of five hut families that are controlling, you know, the whole criminal enterprise, and they've broken sanctions by openly trading in Republic space, basically, even though this Sedri Minor system claims to be an independent colony, but the Republic, I guess, has expanded out far enough where they're considered being in Republic territory. And yet, and yet, when Avar Chris, who has arrived on the scene on Sedri Minor to help out, tries negotiating with the head hut who has arrived, that's Maigara, and so... When Avar proposes that they fight the Drengir together, Megar is like, no, we're not doing that. And then Avar says, oh, fine, this is your planet, so we're out of here. Good luck. And the Huts are like, oh, wait a minute. And so that is the beginning of a tenuous alliance between the Jedi, the Republic, I mean, I guess maybe just the Jedi at this point, and the Huts, as brokered by Avar Chris, and it seems to turn the tide, but perhaps, you know, not before tragedy strikes with the effort that Keeve and Skier put in to try to convince the Drenger that everybody's unclean and that they have to run away, but the arc ends on a cliffhanger with Skier collapsed in Keeve Trennis' arms, and we don't know what's going to happen to Skeev, and well, until the next story arc, presumably.
Possibly the biggest name of all, Yoda, who has apparently been on the Jedi Council previously and is no longer on the Council, has stepped away, and there's a question about whether he's returning to the Council, and he says, nope, I'm, you know, here with the uh, Starhopper, and presumably that has to do with the Padawans that he's having fun with in the High Republic Adventures comic, and so, yeah, the Force is laying out his path for him, as he puts it, basically. And so, no. Uh, Orba Lin, who is the Jedi archivist that is stationed on Starlight Beacon and actually ends up showing up in, oh, what's it called? The Rising Storm, Kevin Scott's new novel, which comes out later this month. Also, Vernestra and Imri, who we met originally in A Test of Courage, which was the middle grade novel by Justina Ireland. They make an appearance here as well. And, you know, I'm mentioning it because it's really fun to see these characters, and this is something that, you know, we've heard talked about with various interviews with High Republic authors, and also even, you know, on the show here as well, just the idea that these you know, these authors get to play with each other's characters, and so it's kind of neat to see, you know, Vernestra and Imri show up, having been Justina's characters and now are Kevin's characters, and, you know, Avar being introduced in Light of the Jedi, and now over here with the comics, and just all these fun situations happening where characters are crossing into each other's stories. It is really kind of cool. So to wrap things up, this first story arc in the High Republic comic series does what it sets out to do. It's introduced us to our major players, Skier and Keeve Trennis. We'll have to see whether Skier continues on or if this is the end. I imagine he's probably going to continue on, but we'll see. I don't have issue six yet, just so you know, so I don't know. Anyway, and, you know, filled with action, filled with monsters, which was a promise that Kevin Scott delivered on, and Ario Anandito, who is the penciler for this, you know, does terrific work, and, you know, the exploding hut is ridiculous. And it gives us more food for thought about the Drengear and what they're capable of, and we'll talk about that in more detail very soon. But that is going to do it for this episode of the show. And it just remains for me to say thank you so much for joining me for it, as always. And may the Force be with you, wherever in the world you may be. Star Wars 7x7 is not endorsed or sponsored yet by Lucasfilm Limited, Disney, or 20th Century Fox, and is intended for entertainment and information purposes only. Star Wars, the Star Wars logo, all names and pictures of Star Wars characters, vehicles, and any other Star Wars related items are registered trademarks and or copyrights of Lucasfilm Limited, other respective trademark and copyright holders. May the Force be with them. All original content is copyright 2021 by Star Wars 7x7. We hope you love it.